You're watching Agenda um, Awani with me, Ibrahim Sani. Today, we shall talk um, about the oil and gas uh, industry, but uh, slanted towards talent building and how Society 5.0 can be coupled with the industry revolution 4.0. Uh, and joining us is a very timely company. Uh, I have with me the Group MD and Group CEO, uh, Datuk Dr. Muhammad Abdul Karim Abdullah uh, of Cerber Dynamic. Uh, and this company is indeed in the news very recently, largely because of their recent acquisition of an Indian company, Enoa. Uh, they just bought 30% of the company for about 3.6 million dollars or about 15 million ringgit and a lot of analysts are arguing that this purchase or this acquisition is in line with their strategy moving forward that thanks for having us this afternoon sorry this evening i just want to understand a little bit better about the purpose of the acquisition of enoa how does being an onm company I mean the oil and gas sector how does this uh, jive with buying an it company uh, firstly, uh, thank you for having me here uh, tonight. Uh, I would like to e emphasize that the acquisitions of Inoa is in line with what we have uh, put forward in our prospectus. Uh, where IT solutions is uh, part of the other products and services. So Inoa is part of this uh, IT initiative. The uh, second uh, issue will be how does we uh, relate these IT solutions to our O&M activities. Uh, I would say that uh, IT plays a very important role regardless of uh, what uh, expertise or services a entity or platform is offering. So the same thing like CyberDynamic, uh, people know that our core competency is in the operations and maintenance. So I always uh, emphasize that when we talk about maintenance, the customer would like to look at efficiencies and productivity. So how do we bring that to uh, serve the customer so that they can achieve this kind of uh, uh, requirements? So IT solutions comes in very nicely because it very much relate to the industry revolution 4.0, where there will be uh, issues uh, which should be tied up uh, to uh, artificial intelligence in trying to uh, carry out preventive, predictive, uh, analytic uh, uh, tasks. So uh, these uh, IT solutions comes into that capability. And of course, it also ties in with your other purchases, um, not just in IT, but in other areas as well, in trying to support your IR 4.0 um, competency initiative. This includes yep. the Al Asaga, the KBE, um, PSICON or SICON and mm. CSE. Do you think that these kind of purchases, while it makes sense individually, collectively, are you moving too fast uh, in terms of uh, aggregating a lot of other companies and trying to work it and gel together? No, I, I would say that whatever we are doing is we are integrating uh, between one component to the other component. Or people say that it's connecting the dots. You mentioned about Saikon. Saikon is a boutique engineering company that we acquired, and uh, they have the ability to come out with uh, rejuvenation uh, design, improvement of efficiencies to the equipment. And uh, part of all this initiative is what we call it, they must have a 3D digitalization uh, expertise. So that uh, very much ties up again to the IT uh, capability. So it's all uh, integrated uh, uh, within the entire group so that uh, we want to achieve what we call it as a one-stop integrated solutions to our customer. Nato, your company has grown from strength to strength. Um, when I first joined Astro Awani, you guys were just about to be listed. You were listed at one ringgit fifty-three cent. Um, right now, you are at three ringgit sixty-eight cent or thereof. Your market cap is about five point four billion. This is not just if you take a you know snap a picture, it's nice, but it's also going the right trajectory. I'd like to point out some key analysis from research houses, Mbank, Alliance, TA, Afin Huang, Public Invest, RHB, UBK, Hian Kenanga. All of them either say buy, maintain, or uh, buy, outperform. <laughs> that's, that's remarkable, to say the least. And, and, and to think that you guys are operating in this kind of market, what's going on in your house? It's really working out well. I would uh, contribute this, of course, uh, to my uh, management team and also the strong support for my uh, board of uh, directors. I think uh, all this uh, teamwork and the strong efforts that they've put in 
really uh, comes to the result as what you have mentioned just now, Jebraim. But I would like to also uh, to mention that uh, behind the door, I mean the, those who are really working in day, night, really throw in a lot of uh, efforts, thoughts, and uh, come up with mitigation plans. If this happens, what's next, and so on. For me, uh, sitting, uh, driving the organizations, I would say that mitigation plans are very important. And I also need to emphasize that our mitigation plans is not only one layer. We go for layer one, layer two, layer, layer three. So if layer one fell, the layer two comes in. Mm. So it's something like plan A, plan B, plan C. Mm -hmm. So with all these uh, strategic uh, planning and actions uh, plan, uh, we are pretty confident that uh, we should be able to uh, face uh, the incoming challenges uh, that the company is going to face. And of course, you, you've outgrown yourself from being a, a domestic company, being a Sarawak-based company, to now a truly regional, in fact, global player. You have presence in Africa, you have presence um, in, in Turkey, you have presence in uh, MENA region, many others. And, and I, I just want to highlight that each re region or each country has its different sets of challenges and risks. Do you think that you have the necessary skills and competency to ensure that you have the eye on the ball in any operations that you operate in, in any other markets that you operate in? Mm, to answer short, yes, I would say we do have. Because uh, what we are doing at the moment, it does not uh, deviate from our core competency. Our core competency is o and and also uh, EPCC. And of course, IT solutions is part of it. Wherever, which country we are going to, this is what we are uh, promoting. And it is within the core competency of the Cyberdemic Group. So I do not foresee uh, that we'll be having uh, a difficulty. We know where to get the source of uh, resource or professionals uh, needed. And uh, if we look at the geographical positioning of the company at the moment, it's quite widely spread across the entire globe. And we can tap onto all these uh, professionals from different parts of the country that we are positioned at the moment. And of course, again, one of the key objectives of your company is not just to grow your O&M business um, and trying to survive in the very tumultuous oil and gas industry, but to also build your competency in Industry 4.0. And with the government recently launching the <coughs> IR 4.0 blueprint um, uh, that we saw by the Miti Minister, they're liking, um, there's a lot of expectations and hopes that this could be the next big thing for the country. However, there are skeptics out there that argue that this could be just another one of the blueprints that the government is doing. Doesn't yeah. matter this government, yeah. previous government. Is it just another lip service that is being done? But is this truly something concrete that players like yourselves are going to support the blueprint and support the nation building initiatives for mm. IR 4.0? I, I think I would like to uh, take also this uh, opportunity to recap back one of the words that inspire me actually, Malaysia Bole. It is a word which has been the more or less uh, promoted by our previous uh, Premier and the existing Premier. Same guy. Yeah, and uh, I think that Two words uh, brings a lot of meaning and aspirations to a lot of Malaysians, including uh, myself. So back to your question, uh, I strongly believe that uh, what the government is doing is something very good because uh, they support the initiative of what our organization is doing. Because before the government launched that uh, policy, we have uh, uh, more or less launched the collaborations with Microsoft very much along the line of Industry 4.0. And uh, as uh, industrialists and as uh, entrepreneurs, we are people who want to make things happen. Mm. So that uh, policy actually helps us to make a stronger penetration, an easier penetration into the industry in Malaysia. And of course, uh, we are undergoing a process what we call proof of concept. Hopefully, by first quarter of next year, it will be up rolling and we'll promote it uh, globally, uh, internationally. All this means nothing if you don't have the right talent and you don't have the right skill sets to train your people to be competent in this. Do you think you have what it takes to train the people to do this? I mean, you know, even right now I have a problem trying to understand my kids doing their things. Mm. What about you guys? Well, I think this way, uh, I would say in the context of uh, IR 4.0, 
uh, Inova acquisitions comes in at the right time and we can access a big pool of professionals expertise in this particular area in a country which people knows that is a billion uh, populations and uh, very well known for the ability in terms of uh, IT uh, and communications uh, capabilities. And uh, I would say that we have used them for quite a number of sizable projects uh, that we have undertook uh, globally. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's a very good uh, platform for us to get access to this pool of uh, professionals. Right, I think we'll take a short break, but when we come back, we'll discuss not just about IR 4.0, but Society 5.0. Thanks for joining us. You're watching Agenda Awani with me, Ibrahim Saini. Today, we're discussing IR 4.0 and Society 5.0 with our esteemed guests, uh, Dato Dr. Uh, Muhammad Abdul Karim Abdullah, the Group MD and CEO of Cerber Dynamic, which in itself, Dato, is an extremely stellar performing company. We've discussed this earlier a few minutes ago. Dato, I just want to touch on Society 5.0. Let me be frank. I didn't know about this whole term until I had to do this interview. Earlier in the day, I was talking to one of the producers. Come on, don't make me Google this thing. And, and I had to. And when I Googled in Society 5.0, I found it very interesting. And, and pardon my, you know, my misconception if I may get this wrong, but Society 5.0 is not just about equipping <coughs> the society and the talent to ensure that they can embrace technology, but to change the way they do things mentally as well, to ensure mm. that everything they do, they do it super smart, super efficient, and try to do it with supreme honesty in how they deliver their service and products. Mm. It's being discussed in Japan, it's being discussed in Germany. Do you think that Malaysia is ready to embrace something like Society 5.0? I always uh, say that uh, it's not the issue of whether we are ready or not. I was involved in one the panel discussions and so on, and it's the same thing that has been voiced up. Uh, don't talk about industry uh, 4.0, don't talk about society 5.0. Even the industry 1.0 uh, or 2.0, we are still doing a catching up. So what, what are we here to tell the citizens or the country to basically go for 4.0 or society 5.0? But I know for the opinion that it's not the issue of whether the people is ready or not. It's the issue that Everybody, whether you are ready or not, you have to embark onto it. Because failing which, you are going to be left behind. You are going to suffer in terms of the developments and how you are going to position yourself to have a future, better way of living. No, but it's easier said than done, Dato. Because, mm -hmm. you know, during the break, I was talking about changes, right? When you change system, when you change technology, mm -hmm. you can literally buy the thing, change it, swap from from server hardware mm. server you just go to cloud mm. from you know um, non connected devices to iot simple but what we want here is to change culture to change behavior mm. to change you know thinking process mm -hmm. clearly this mm. is going to be much harder mm. than anyone can ever do again it goes back to malaysia Wale. because uh, if you look at uh, the uh, mobile phone influence when it first uh, come into the market, a lot of people is uh, still not receiving it in a positive manner, especially parents, uh, grandparents and so on. They, 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 they were of the opinion that it might influence the thinking of the children and so on. And uh, all this uh, internet is influencing and giving a lot of negative uh, implications uh, to the uh, younger generation. But at the end of the day, you look at today, uh, how old they are, they are forced to learn. And uh, they are doing quite well. And they are adopting themselves, adapting themselves into that situation. So what I'm trying to say is if individuals are being forced and educated and trained and to be told of the importance of it, people will go for it. Dato, Cyber Dynamics started very, very humble beginnings. 25 years ago, clearly something very different from what it is today. You probably didn't have, didn't have cell phones then. But now we're talking about implanted, you know, headsets inside your brain, you know, coming forward. Do you think that a company like yourself, you know what it takes to go from 25 years ago to today. 
you, you kind of have a feeling that, okay, I, I think I know what I need to do for the next 25 years, uh -huh. particularly when we talk about Society 5.0, yep. particularly when we talk about uh, changing thinking set uh, mentality or, 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 or the way we do things uh, moving forward. Mm. Yeah. Uh, one of the elements, uh, as what you have mentioned just now, uh, talking about Society 5.0 is it has the human touch uh, element in it. Uh, and uh, very much if you look at what is going on in Japan, it's uh, heading towards, it's, it's having an aging uh, community at the moment. Mm. So Society 5.0 is uh, looking at technology that can come in uh, to interact and give a more comfortable uh, kind of uh, interactions to them. So what, what does this mean? This means that if you look at uh, robotics as a means of communication between human and uh, created uh, robots, uh, robots now is designed in such a way that uh, they will have all those kind of uh, human touch into it. They can communicate with each other. So what it means here is this aging community can learn or get the help from robots, especially in the developed countries like Japan now. Uh, all the children are going to work at the daytime night time coming back late and a lot of all these uh, grandfather, grandmother is left at home without any uh, people looking after them. So these are the technology that comes in to help to uh, take place of all this uh, in, uh, in, in, in the presence of non-human being. And, and we're not that far off because um, uh, demographic uh, economies that we brought over mm -hmm. from uh, EPF yeah. argues that uh, we, Malaysia, have the beginnings of an aging society as well. Yeah. If you look at the human, what do you call that, population pyramid, right. where you set, uh, you know, the oldest, the youngest, left side female, mm. right side mm. male, mm. we're not a triangle anymore. We're not an isolated triangle. We're, we're becoming to look like a diamond. What yep. this means is that the people are producing lesser and lesser, and eventually over 20, 30 years, we're going to have an aging population. Correct. It's good to know that now, because then we can future-proof ourselves in yeah. managing uh, our population. And it's not just about taking care of society. It's about building businesses like, um, li like your business and trying to future-proof that as well. Mm. Do you think that we got lucky that we are being alerted now so that we can be ready for the future? I, I think from the concept, uh, uh, perspective of our organizations, uh, we are a bit lucky because we have the opportunity to travel across the entire globe. Uh, we have seen uh, very well developed countries, uh, such as uh, US, Germany, uh, Switzerland, and so on. And we have also seen uh, countries which are a bit uh, behind, like all those uh, in the African continent. And uh, of course, Malaysia is in between. And I would say that uh, with all this uh, exposure and so on, it really uh, 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 motivates uh, our, our, our serve and also our organizations too. Uh, go seriously embark on all this kind of uh, technology. Mm. And uh, we strongly believe that this is the way forward. Uh, by whatever means, uh, we have to acquire, understand, develop, and uh, expand uh, further on this uh, technology. I can't, uh, I will be remiss if I don't touch this issue, which is yeah. on the issue of uh, oil prices. Mm -hmm. This has been going on and on. Um, people like Sapura, for instance, uh, have argued that they can never predict the future of oil price because whoever that says that they can predict has always failed. And right now, oil price have gone down from $85 per barrel to now $61 per barrel. Might go down even further, might go up. These short-term market uh, ongoings, does this give any rise to how you do your business? Uh when we got the company uh, approved and to be uh, listed onto the uh, Bursa Malaysia, I would say that uh, during that time, the oil price has dropped quite low. Uh, if I re remember rightfully, it's about uh, US dollar 40. Uh, and uh, everybody is advising us not to go. But we went out for a roadshow to explain to people that maintenance uh, will still be uh, required regardless of right, what the oil, oil price, price will be. So I think uh, through all these uh, roadshows that we have gone through, we managed to convince people. Uh, the uh, IPO uh, shares was oversubscribed. And here we are. We still managed to uh, do and achieve uh, based on the projections that we have committed over to the uh, investor and also the shareholders. So 
Uh, moving forward, uh, of course, if the price is better, then the capex uh, from the asset owner like Petronas, Shell and so on will be higher. And that will help us to uh, grow our EPCC component uh, uh, faster. And uh, in relationship to these IT solutions is a, a capability uh, embedded together with the technology that can help to add value to the uh, core competency or services that That's we are right. providing. Yeah. Thank you, Rato. That was a very excellent chat. Uh, mm -hmm. I've been speaking to Rato um, Abdul Karim uh, Abdullah, the Group MD and Group CEO of Serbo Dynamic. Watch out for more that is coming in from this company because indeed this is one of the sterling performance uh, company from uh, KLSC right now. Uh, that's it for this evening. Thank you very much for watching. And don't forget to watch uh, Let's Talk with Sharad Putin that's coming up half an hour from now. Thanks for joining us. You're watching Agenda Awani with me, Ibrahim Saini. Today we're discussing IR 4.0 and Society 5.0 with our esteemed guests, uh, Dato Dr. Uh, Muhammad Abdul Karim Abdullah, the Group MD and CEO of Cerber Dynamic, which in itself, Dato, is an extremely stellar performing company. We've discussed this earlier a few minutes ago. Dato, I just want to touch on Society 5.0. Let me be frank. I didn't know about this whole term until I had to do this interview. Earlier in the day, I was talking to one of the producers. Come on, don't make me Google this thing. And, and I had to. And when I Googled Society 5.0, I found it very interesting. And, and pardon my, you know, my misconception if I may get this wrong, but Society 5.0 is not just about equipping <coughs> the society and the talent to ensure that they can embrace technology, but to change the way they do things mentally as well, to ensure mm. that everything they do, they do it super smart, super efficient, and try to do it with supreme honesty in how they deliver their service and products. Mm. It's being discussed in Japan, it's being discussed in Germany. Do you think that Malaysia is ready to embrace something like Society 5.0? I always uh, say that uh, it's not the issue of whether we are ready or not. I was involved in one uh, panel discussions and so on, and it's the same thing that has been voiced out. Uh, don't talk about industry uh, 4.0, don't talk about society 5.0. Even the industry 1.0 uh, or 2.0, we are still doing a catching up. So what, what are we here to tell the citizens or the country to basically go for 4.0 or society 5.0? But I know for the opinion that it's not an issue of whether the people is ready or not. It's the issue that Everybody, whether you are ready or not, you have to embark onto it. Because failing which, you are going to be left behind. You are going to suffer in terms of the developments and how you are going to position yourself to have a future, better way of living. No, but it's easier said than done, Dato. Because, mm. you know, during the break, I was talking about changes, right? When you change system, when you change technology, mm. you can literally buy the thing, change it, swap from, from server, hardware mm. server, you go to cloud, mm. from you know, um, non-connected devices to IoT, simple. But what we want here is to change culture, to change behavior, mm. to change you know, thinking process. Mm -hmm. Clearly, this mm. is going to be much harder mm. than anyone can ever do. Again, it goes back to Malaysia, Mole. Because uh, if you look at uh, the uh, mobile phone influence, when it first uh, come into the market, a lot of people is uh, still not receiving it in a positive manner, especially parents, uh, grandparents and so on. They, 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 they were of the opinion that it might influence the thinking of the children and so on. And uh, all this uh, internet is influencing and giving a lot of negative uh, implications uh, to the uh, younger generation. But at the end of the day, you look at today, uh, how old they are, they are forced to learn. And uh, they are doing quite well. And they are adopting themselves, adapting themselves into that situation. So what I'm trying to say is, if 
individuals are being forced and educated and trained and to be told of the importance of it, people will go for it. Datuk, Silver Dynamics started very, very humble beginnings. 25 years ago, clearly something very different from what it is today. You probably didn't have, didn't have cell phones then. But now we're talking about implanted you know, headsets inside your brain you know, coming forward. Do you think that a company like yourself, you, you know what it takes to go from 25 years ago to today, you, you kind of have a feeling that, okay, I, I think I know what I need to do for the next 25 years, uh. particularly when we talk about Society 5.0, yeah. particularly when we talk about uh, changing thinking set uh, mentality or, 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 or the way we do things uh, moving forward. Mm. Yeah. Uh, one of the elements, uh, as what you have mentioned just now, uh, talking about society uh, 5.0 is it has the human touch uh, element in it. Uh, and uh, very much if you look at what is going on in Japan, it's uh, heading towards, it's, it's having an aging uh, community at the moment. Mm. So society 5.0 is uh, looking at technology that can come in uh, to interact and give a more comfortable uh, kind of uh, interactions to them. So what, what does this mean? This means that if you look at uh, robotics as a means of communication between human and uh, created uh, robots, uh, robots now is designed in such a way that uh, they will have all those kind of uh, human touch into it. They can communicate with each other. So what it means here is this aging community can learn or get the help from robots, especially in the developed uh, countries like Japan now. Uh, all the children are going to work at the daytime, nighttime coming back late, and a lot of all these uh, grandfather, grandmother is left at home without any uh, people looking after them. So these are the technology that comes in to help to uh, take place of all these uh, in, uh, in, in, in the presence of non-human beings. And, and we're not that far off because um, uh, demographic uh, economies that we brought over mm. from uh, EPF yep. argues that uh, we, Malaysia, have the beginnings of an aging society as well. Yep. If you look at the human, what we call that population pyramid, right. where you said, uh, you know, the oldest, the youngest, left side, female, mm. right side, mm. male. Mm. We're not a triangle anymore. We're not an isolated triangle. We're, we're becoming to look like a diamond. What yep. this means is that the people are producing less and less and eventually over 20, 30 years, we're going to have an aging population. Correct. It's good to know that now because then we can full future-proof ourselves in yeah. managing uh, our population. And it's not just about taking care of society. It's about building businesses like, um, li like your business and trying to future-proof that as well. Mm. Do you think that we got lucky that we are being alerted now so that we can be ready for the future? I, I think from the concept, uh, uh, perspective of our organizations, uh, we are a bit lucky because we have the opportunity to travel across the entire globe. Uh, we have seen the very well developed countries, uh, such as uh, US, Germany, uh, Switzerland, and so on. And we have also seen the countries which are a bit uh, behind, like all those uh, in the African continent. And uh, of course, Malaysia is in between. And I would say that uh, with all this uh, exposure and so on, it really uh, uh, motivates uh, our, our, our serve and also our organizations to uh, go seriously embark on all this kind of uh, technology. Mm. And uh, we strongly believe that this is the way forward. Uh, by whatever means, uh, we have to acquire, understand, develop, and uh, expand uh, further on this uh, technology. I can't, uh, I will be remiss if I don't touch this issue, which is yeah. on the issue of uh, oil prices. Mm -hmm. Th this has been going on and on. Um, people like Sapura, for instance, uh, have argued that they can never predict the future of oil price because whoever ha that says that they can predict has always failed. And right now, oil prices have gone down from $85 per barrel to now $61 per barrel. Might go down even further, might go up. These short term market uh, ongoings, does this? give any rise to how you do your business? Uh, when we got the company uh, approved and to be uh, listed onto the uh, Bursa Malaysia, I would say that uh, during that time, the oil price has dropped quite low. Uh, if I re remember rightfully, it's about uh, US dollar 40. Uh, and uh, everybody is advising us not to go. 
but we went out for a roadshow to explain to people that maintenance uh, will still be uh, required regardless of mm, what the oil price. price will be. So I think uh, through all these uh, roadshows that we have gone through, we managed to convince people. Uh, the uh, IPO uh, shares was oversubscribed, and here we are. We still managed to uh, do and achieve uh, based on the projections that we have committed over to the uh, investor and also the shareholders. So uh, moving forward, uh, of course, if the price is better, then the capex uh, from the asset owner like Petronas, Shell, and so on will be higher, and that will help us to uh, grow our EPCC component uh, uh, faster. And uh, in relationship to these IT solutions is uh, uh, a capability uh, embedded together with the technology that can help to add value to the uh, core competency or services that yeah, we are right. providing. Yeah. Thank you, Rato. That was a very excellent chat. Uh, I've been speaking to Rato um, Abdul Karim uh, Abdullah, the Group MD and Group CEO of Serber Dynamic. Watch out for more that is coming in from this company because indeed this is one of the sterling performance uh, company from uh, KLSC right now. Uh, that's it for this evening. Thank you very much for watching. And don't forget to watch uh, Let's Talk with Sharak Putin that's coming up half an hour from now.